Okay, so for one and two, we have to evaluate. So we're gonna put in our numbers, what the variables represent, and then follow order of operations. So we have four times A, A is negative three minus three. So we're going to follow order of operations, would be, which would be to multiply first. So that gives you negative 12. And then negative 12 minus three is negative 15. For question two, we're gonna substitute in B and C. So it tells us in the directions that B is four and C is negative two. So we have four, so we have two times B, which is four minus five times negative two. So we're gonna begin by multiplying. So two times four is eight. And then negative five times negative two is positive 10. So when we add that together, we get 18. And then lastly, for question three, we're gonna distribute the, distribute the three first. So that's going to give you six minus nine X equals 42. Subtract six from both sides. So negative nine X equals 42 minus six. What is 42 minus six? 36, okay. And then your last step is going to be to divide by negative nine. So X equals negative four, good job. Okay, so now let's go to our notes packet. Make sure you write your first and last name on your note packet. All of these should be in your binder. So we finished out the algebra review. Now we're moving on to module eight. And module eight is over relations and functions. So the first thing you're going to do is write down some definitions. four definitions that we're going to focus on today so take a minute to copy down these four definitions what is domain what is range what does it mean for it to be a function and what does it mean to be one-to-one -one? so take a minute and copy down these definitions first page of your notes at the top so you're going to write in domain domain is all of your x values Range is all of the y values. A function means you have no repeats in domain. And one to one, you have no repeats in domain or range. So I'll give you a minute to copy that down and then we'll talk about it.
eight is looking at a graph or a table and determining what the domain and range is and if it's a function or if it's one to one. Got it? Everybody got it? Okay. So let's start off by looking at these two graphs under example one. So your domain in this graph, whenever you have a graph that has arrows that go to the left and the right, does everyone see this graph in your notes? All right, so because there's no restrictions and this graph goes left and right. So this graph is going far, far to the left and far, far to the right. So for domain, I want you to think left to right. How far does the graph go to the left? How far does the graph go to the right? And this graph, because it has an arrow, it's going to go far to the left it's going to continue to the left forever and it's going to continue to the right forever so the domain is all real numbers so it's all real numbers which in interval notation we say negative infinity to infinity but when we talk about range we don't look at we don't read it from left to right we read it from the bottom. So how far does it go down? To the top. How far does it go up? And if I'm looking at this graph from down to up, notice that it doesn't have a lowest point because both arrows go down, it's going to continue down forever but it does have a highest point. The highest it goes is right here. And what does Y equal right here? Right here, your Y value is zero. So that means that your range would be Y is less than or equal to zero, or in interval notation, it would be negative infinity to zero. Because the lowest it goes, because it's going to keep going down forever, the lowest it's going to go is negative infinity, but the highest point it reaches is zero. So that's the first part we're going to look at when we have a graph. So one of the things we're going to do, bless you is look at a graph and determine the domain and range. Don't worry about codomain. We're not doing that. Take that off. But we're going to talk about domain and range of a graph. And then we're going to look at the graph to figure out, is it a function or is it one-to-one? -one? Okay. So in order for it to be a function, and I'm going to zoom in real quick. Okay. In order for it to be a function, it has to pass a vertical line test. So this is a vertical line test. So that means that if I draw a vertical line, how many times does that vertical line, that purple vertical line, go through the blue graph? one time so that means it passed it so this graph passes a vertical line test so is it a function the answer is yes it is a function and it's a function because it passed i'm just going to say vlt or vertical line test But now, in order for it to be one-to-one, -one, it has to pass a vertical line test and a horizontal line test. So we already know it passed the vertical line test. Let's see, will it pass a horizontal line test? So if I take that and if I draw a horizontal line, so you see that red horizontal line? How many times does that red horizontal line cross through the blue graph? Twice. Twice. 
So that means it is not one to one. So no. And the reason why is because it fails the horizontal line test. So one to one test, it has to pass a vertical line test and a horizontal line test. And if it doesn't pass them both, it is not one to one. Okay. So let's go to page two and look at the graph at the top of page two in our notes. When we look at the graph at the top of page two in our notes, the first thing we want to do is look at figure out our domain. So remember for domain, we're going to look at how far does this graph go to the left and right. And because I have an arrow that points to the left and to the right, then we know my domain is all real numbers. Which can also be written as negative infinity to infinity. Now my range, that's different because this graph goes down forever, but it definitely has a highest point. So right here, this is the highest point. And what is the Y value equal where I drew that green line? So let's, let's count it out. So this is zero, one, two, three. So the highest this graph goes on the Y axis is three, and then it goes down forever. So that means my range is y is less than or equal to three. Now this can also be written as negative infinity to three, and three would get a bracket. Okay, you're almost done. For a function tests, remember, for it to be a function, it has to pass a vertical line test. And this graph does pass the vertical line test. So if I draw a vertical line right here, going through here, that vertical line only crosses the graph one time. So is it a function? Yes. It's a function because it passes the vertical line test. But do you think this graph is going to be one-to-one? -one? It's not. If I draw a horizontal line, it crosses through it twice. So it is not one-to-one. -one. And it's not one-to-one -one because it fails the horizontal line test. All right, so we're gonna actually start example two and then we'll finish that. And that'll be it for today. So in your notes, Let's look at example two and determine looking at a table if they're functions. All right, so let's go ahead. So again, the definition of function is Another way to write it is X values do not repeat. That's how we know it's a function. There is no repeat in the X values. And for it to be one to one, the X values and the Y values do not repeat. So we're gonna look at these tables and determine if they're functions. So first we're gonna look at the X values. 
to see if there is a repeat. If, if there is a repeat, then it's automatically a no. All right, so when I'm looking here, are any of these numbers in this first column the same? Yeah, what number do you see twice? One. So because of this, that first table is not a function. And because it's not a function, it is also not one-to-one. -one. So, sorry, this is my first integrated class. We'll just say it's neither. We'll keep it simple. So you don't have to say it's not, not. You can just say it's neither. All right, let's look at our second table. Do you see any repeats in X? So we got negative 6, 5, 4, negative 5, and 1. All right, so that's good. So that means that it's a function. Now let's see if it's also 1 to 1. So are any of those Y values a repeat? No. So that means that this one, because it doesn't have any repeats at all, we call this a one-to-one -one function. It's one-to-one. -one. And it's one-to-one -one because there is no repeats in X and there is no repeats in Y. All right, go ahead and look at that third table. So first, let's look at X. Do we have any repeats in X? What about Y? Do we have any repeats in Y? Yeah. yeah. So because of this, this table is a function, but it's not one-to-one. -one. So because we don't have any repeats in X, we can say that it's a function. But because there is repeats in Y, it is not one-to-one. -one. So it's just a function. All right, try to do that last table by yourself at the bottom. <clears throat> And tell me either say either say neither, function, or one to one. Those are your only three answers. Either it's neither, or it's a function, or it's one to one. So raise your hand if you say that it's neither. Who says it's a function? Who says one to one? All right, it is a function. And the reason why it's not one to one is because we have repeats in Y. So you can't have any repeats in Y for it to be a function. All right, our last table, let's look at the table at the top of page three, and that's it. And all I want you to do is look at the gold medal, look at gold, silver, and bronze. Now we automatically know that this is a function. This is a function because, so this would represent X. So go ahead and put an X. This, the year would be X. There's no repeats in X. So now we're going to look at the Y values. So first, let's look at gold medals. Mm -hmm. So is the gold medal, when we look at this column, do you see a repeat? Yeah, yeah we have repeats in the year 2016 and 2012. So that means that for gold medals, it is a function, but it is not one-to-one -one because we had a repeat. All right, now let's look at silver. Do you see any repeats in this column? So we had 37, 29, 38, 39, and 24. Are any of those numbers the same? So we know that silver would be a function and it's one-to-one. -one. So this is actually one-to-one. -one. Silver is one-to-one -one because there's no repeats. All 
All right, and lastly, do bronze. Look at that third <clears throat> column. Do we have any Do we have any um, repeats for bronze? So we went 38, 29, 36, 26, and 32. So that would be also one-to-one. -one. And it's one-to-one -one because we have no repeats. Okay, we're gonna end there. I'm gonna pass out homework one and we'll talk about when it's due later. Um,